Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Venmo, and the Patreon family. We are working December 9th. It goes down on ESPN. Shout out again to Top Rank and Rock Nation for making this happen. Now, you've seen the clip at the beginning. Also, shout out to Mundo Boxing. They hold Rigandau down, give a lot of um, insight. And I'm looking forward to this fight, people. Box the Ego first look, tell the tape coming soon on this particular fight. And this is a great way to cap off the year. We've had a great year. Now, David Lemieux is getting a title shot with Billy Joe Saunders. Also in December, you get to see Miguel Cotto. He's fighting Saddam Ali. Also in December, you have Vasily Lomachenko versus Guillermo Rigondeaux. So, going to be a great month. And a great next couple of months, actually. But I want to get to this quote from Guillermo Rigondeaux, the jackal, El Chacal. And I quote, Rigondeaux says, I will not have problems. He is the one who is going to have them because I am not like those dead men with whom he has fought. Those are, that's a direct quote from Rigondeau. And he says Lomachenko has fought some dead men. Now, I give credit to Lomachenko. I give credit to his resume. In as few fights as 10 fights or whatnot, he has some names on there. So his amateur pedigree and fighting in the pre before he turned pro in the World Boxing Series or whatever it was called, it shows because he, you know what I mean? You don't just. Most guys like a Shakur Stevenson, they have Olympic pedigree too, but you, you see them fighting low-level opposition, Mike Connellan, Mick Connellan. They're, they're not fighting big names, right? Oscar Valdez, they haven't fought the Gary Russells and stuff in their division as of right now because they're building up to that, right? So that makes sense, but Lomachak, Lomachenko has been on the fast track, so I give him credit. But as far as the dead man comment, I thought that was interesting from Rigondeaux. And I do think Rigondeaux has a point in terms of Lomachenko since Salido. Salido was a super live dog, and that's the guy that beat him. But to me, he hasn't really fought anyone that I thought would even do better than what they actually did. Miguel Madiaga lost to Nicholas Walters, got knocked down. Lost to Oscar Valdez and got knocked down, right? And then he moved up in weight and, and took on a champion like Lomachenko. So I really didn't see Miguel Madiaga doing anything with him. Lomachenko fought on some, I think on Pacquiao undercards when they were in Macau, China, and I don't even know who he was fighting. He looked damn good in the fight, but again, it wasn't against major competition, right? And then you look at the other names like Jason Sosa. Yeah, Jason Sosa, I don't know if he's still a champion, because I don't even know if his belt was eligible, but he did beat Javier Fortuna. He definitely lost to Nicholas Walters, even though they, despite what the judges said, Walters should have won that fight, right? and he he lacks amateur experience like he he literally had like i think less than 10 amateur fights lomachenko has close to 400 you know what i mean lomachenko just now almost has 10 pro fights so there's a big experience gap for that and you could be as tough as nails and stuff like that but unless you have some massive power like maybe even a, like a javante tank davis but tank davis actually has an amateur pedigree he has like over 200 ammies 
Jason Sosa didn't, so I really didn't see him doing anything. Nicholas Walters was a very good win in name on Lomachenko, but he didn't have much momentum. He was coming off a draw and a year plus layoff in which he gained a lot of weight in that offseason and top rank starved him out, didn't give him any fights in between. And then they they tried to negotiate it for the summer, couldn't agree on the money, and then he's starved out of fights. He didn't get any, any other opportunities. So by the end of the year, they came back to the negotiating table. He actually took less money. He took less money. So that shows me there was a level of desperation because why would you say, 500,000 is not good enough for whatever the, the the summertime negotiations were and then later that year when it comes back around take less than that so obviously he needed some money and he needed you know what I mean he, he was these fighters have lives and mortgages and all types of stuff like that so he took it and his performance was piss poor like it didn't even look like the axe man and some of that you have to credit to Lomachenko for getting off first but he just looked like a, a discouraged man like he basically quit in the fight Lomachenko was hitting him and he just couldn't he wasn't quick enough to to counter and it looked like he wasn't even really truly trying to be honest it looked like he he came to light it, it looked like Canelo versus Chavez Jr. type of performance where it's just like whatever whatever happens hand me my check but that's just my opinion on it um and then Gary Russell Jr. But at the time Lomachenko fought Gary Russell Jr., even though he's a talented fighter, Russell hadn't fought anyone at that time. He didn't have any big names. He had like Estrada and like low level names. And then he later became a champion. So um, interesting point from Riganow. Let me know what you guys think. Nonetheless, they're fighting at 130, December 9th, and none of the talking will matter at that point. And it goes down. Who you picking? Riganow or Lomachenko? Lomachenko or Riganow? Great fight. It's for a title. It's on ESPN. Great exposure. Let's get it. Let me know your thoughts. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego sending off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.